Hey guys, Miss Sarah here with Kids Kingdom Sunday School. I hope you're having a great week. We are going to start things off with our faith word. Our faith word this month for January is journey. Journey is to faithfully follow where God leads. We are going to look at how Jesus did that. Jesus faithfully followed where God led, and we get to do that too. And we get to be a part of Jesus's journey. My dog just sneezed. God bless you, Fungo. So we're going to look at how Jesus did that, and we're going to think about how we can do that in our lives. Our story today is Jesus's baptism. Many of you guys have been baptized, and what I would like you to do is ask your grown-ups to see pictures of that special day. Because in our church, a lot of times, parents bring their children as babies to be baptized, and you probably don't remember that day because you were a tiny baby. So when your parents brought you to be baptized, they made a promise to help you grow to know God and grow strong in your faith as you grew up. So I have, a, I have to tell you guys something. I did not get baptized as a baby. I, some people don't get baptized as a baby. Some people choose to get baptized when they're grownups, when they're adults. So and that's what I did. I was baptized as an adult. I want to show you guys a picture of some pictures of my baptism. So I have a picture of my baptism. It was at a lake. So here I have three pictures I'm going to show you. So here's the first picture. This is the first picture. And I'm in a lake, like I told you guys. And this is the second picture. I'm getting dunked underwater. And here is the third picture coming up out of the water. So this is my baptism. And I was baptized as an adult. I said that. Jesus was also baptized as an adult. And so when I got baptized, I made the, the same kind of promises for myself that your parents made for you when you were babies. I was making some promises that I was going to live my life for God. And then I was going to work hard to grow strong in my faith. And that's what I was doing there. And so Jesus, as an adult, he made a decision to go and get baptized. But it was a little bit different for him. So we're going to check out his story in just a second. This is considered kind of the starting point for his entire ministry. Now, the New Testament starts with four books of the Bible. They're called, they have a special name, they're called the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these all have stories about Jesus' journey. And they all, they all have stories about Jesus' journey, but they don't all have all the same stories. Now, sometimes Matthew will have a story, and Mark will have a similar story, but then Luke and John maybe won't have that story in that. But then, like, Mark and John might have a similar story, or, like, Mark and Luke and John might have a, three of the same kind of stories, or Matthew... Mark and Luke might have similar stories in it that John won't have that kind of story in it. Or maybe Mark and Luke might have a story that Matthew and John don't have. Um, so they have similar stories of Jesus' journey, but they don't all necessarily tell all the same stories in all the same order. So these four books, though, they all together, they have this great picture of Jesus' journey of when he was here. But very rarely do they all include a story that happened to Jesus. This story of Jesus' baptism is one of those cases where all four of the Gospels retell this story. So that's kind of cool. So you know what that tells me? This was really important enough for all four of these people who wrote these Gospels to write it down. They're like, oh, we got to make sure we retell this part of it because it was really, really cool. What happened at this part of the journey was really, really cool. So all four have this retelling of Jesus' baptism. Now, the neat thing is that it's not exactly a word-for-word -word retelling. So if you read Matthew's version of Jesus' baptism, it's a little bit different than Mark's or Luke's or John's. So we're going to read Luke's version of Jesus' baptism. If you want to go check out Matthew's, and Mark's and John's, it might be a little bit different. It'll be the same story, but they'll just tell it a little bit different. But it might be kind of cool to compare how all 
all the guys saw the events of that day and how they see it a little bit different from each other. But we're going to check out Luke's version. And Luke's version is found in Luke chapter 3. We're going to read verses 3 through 22. And full disclosure, I'm starting at verse 3 because there's some hard to pronounce names in verses 1 and 2. So I'm skipping down to verse 3. And um, that's why we're starting in verse 3. So we are going to start in verse 3 of Luke 3. And we're going to check out the Luke version of Jesus' baptism. So let's see what it says. And this is from the Common English Bible. So I'm reading from the YouVersion Bible app on my phone. If you want to follow along in your Bible at home, you can grab it and look up Luke chapter 3. And we're starting in verse 3. We're going to verse 22. John went throughout the region of the Jordan River calling people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted to wanted God to forgive their sins. This was just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight, the rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. Then John said to the crowds, who came to be baptized, you children of snakes who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon, produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The ax is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds asked him, what then should we do? He answered, Whoever has two shirts must share one with one who has none. And whoever has food must do the same. Even the tax collectors came to be baptized. They said, Teacher, what should we do? He replied, Collect no more than what you are authorized to collect. Soldiers asked, What about us? What should we do? He answered, Don't cheat or harass anyone. Be satisfied with your pay. The people were filled with expectation, and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. But John replied to them, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husk is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring wheat into his barn but he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. With many other words, John appealed to them, proclaiming good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, heart had been criticized harshly by John because of Herodias, Herod's brother's wife, and because of all the evil he had done. He added this to the list of evil deeds, and locked, he locked John up in prison. When Jesus, oh, when every, excuse me, when everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven opened up, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove, and there was a voice from heaven, You are my son, whom I dearly love, in you I find happiness. That is Luke 3, verses 3 through 22. And that's our piece of Jesus's journey for today. The unique thing about Luke's version of Jesus's baptism is that it's not a whole lot about Jesus. It's a whole lot about John, isn't it? Luke spends the first 17 verses that we read or so talking about John the Baptist. Do you remember who John the Baptist is? John is Zechariah and Elizabeth's baby that we read about last month in December, if you were with us in December Sunday School. He is, I think if I'm correct, he's John's second cousin, or he's Jesus' second cousin. John is baptizing everyone who is coming to him. He's talking to them. He's teaching them. He's saying, look, guys, you 
are making some bad choices, some bad decisions. You are doing things that are wrong. You're doing things that are not making happy, God happy here. You're making some bad choices. You need to make some better decisions here. He's talking to everyone who's listening to him. He's talking to tax collectors who are cheating people. He's talking to soldiers who are apparently harassing people, cheating people. He's talking to regular everyday people. And he's just saying, you guys just have to, you have to make better decisions. You have to make wiser choices. You have to do better by the people. You have to do better, period. And so, and when he's saying you have to do better, he's not saying you have to do better by a, our kind of standard. He's saying you have to do things that God wants you to do. You have to stop stealing from people. You have to stop doing things that are hurtful to people. You have to, when you see somebody who is in need, you have to help them. And he's challenging them to think about others, to love others well, to love God. And as the people hear these things, their hearts start to hurt a little bit. Their hearts start to want to change. And so they start getting baptized because they are thinking, we want to be different. We want to do better. And so they are making a decision to change and they get baptized as a way of showing the people around them that they're going, they're really making a choice, an effort to live differently, to do something different. So people start getting baptized. They're turning away from their old way of life, their old way of doing things, their old patterns. And they're saying, we're going to live differently. We're going to make better decisions. We're going to make better choices. And those better choices are that we're going to live the way that God wants us to live. And then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. Jesus is the one that John's been talking to them about when he's saying somebody greater than I is going to be coming. Someone whose sandals I'm not even worthy to untie. I'm baptizing you with water. Somebody's going to come that's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's been telling them about Jesus. And then here comes Jesus showing up, asking John to baptize him. John's surprised. He's like, I don't even think I have any business baptizing you. You're who I've been waiting for. And Jesus is like, nope, this is how it has to be. Not because Jesus has any sin in his life, but because this is part of Jesus' journey. This is what God has asked Jesus to do. This is how God wants to prepare Jesus for the next step of his path, of his journey. And God wants the people to see, this is my son. This is the one I've chosen to tell you about the things that I have in store for you. And so Jesus gets baptized. And when Jesus gets baptized, heaven opens up. The dove comes down and, and that's the representation of the Holy Spirit. And the voice from heaven says, you are my son whom I dearly love and you I find happiness. And you guys know that that's our memory verse for this month. We worked on that last week. Hopefully you're gonna keep working on that. You can write that down. You can put that um, on a note card. I have these little note cards that I like to use to write my memory verses on. I didn't write it down for this month yet, but these are the kind of note cards that I use to put my memory verses on. And I post those up sometimes around the house or I keep it in my pocket so I can pull it out and use it to remind myself that this is our memory verse for the month and this is what I need to be working on. So. Our memory verse is, you are my son, whom I love. No, whom, I said it wrong. Let's start over. You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. Luke 3, 22. That's our memory verse. And I want to tell you guys something. You probably already know this. You are dearly loved by God. And God finds happiness in you. You bring God happiness. Did you know that? You're part of God's family too. You bring him happiness. You are loved by God. And he wants you to know that today. Did you know all that already? I bet you did. Some of you did. Some of you might not have known that. But I want you to know that because it's true. And because of Jesus, we... Are part of God's family. 
He loves us so much that he gave us Jesus. And as we continue on this journey with Jesus, we're going to get to see more and more and more of God's love for us in action. His whole life, Jesus' whole life, guys, is a big love letter to us. And I am so excited to see what the next part of it is. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that you love us, that you find happiness in us. Thank you that you want us to live life for you. Thank you that you give us the example of Jesus, um, that we get to walk with you, that we get to be on this journey with you. But thank you that you also want us, Lord, to turn away from things that that don't keep us on that path, God. Help us to see the things in our lives that are keeping us from you and help us to turn away from them and walk toward you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you were with us Thursday on Kids Kingdom Club, you know how much fun we had. If you were not, please join us on Zoom this week at 445. The link is at www.pfumc.org slash kids. And we will be there at 445. I know some of you were confused because of me about the time last week. I sent out a reminder email. I put, be there at 430. The time is really 445. We were still on at 445. So if you had signed on at 445, it was not a problem. But I mix up the time in my reminder email. So 445, Kids Kingdom Club Zoom this Thursday. Hopefully we'll see you there. And that's all for us this week. Have a great week, guys. See you next time. Bye.